So I've been having problems with the bottom die on the hammer here coming loose since I got it and I've been playing with it a little bit. And you know, I keep hammering that shim back in there. Well, I notice that it doesn't have the two shims that it ought to have. So come to find out, pull it out and somebody welded a bunch of sloppy beads on there to widen this out instead of adding that second uh, shim piece there. So uh, that's special, but I'm gonna go ahead and grind these off and we'll add that piece in there. And hopefully it'll shim up like it's supposed to. Okay, I think we're good to go. It actually, it's tight now. And the shims are actually contacting the surface area that they should be instead of just the top of those weld beads. So I think we're good, hopefully. guys so this is uh, I've done all my normalizing and grain refinement cycles per usual and getting ready to uh, harden it and then temper it I'm gonna clean up the profile before I do that but just a real quick uh, after action review I guess on using the little giant hammer little giant 50 pound versus doing this forging this by hand and the first thing is like the amount of forging that you can do with that machine on a blade like this or anything similar uh, in the same amount of time is just there's just no comparison the the uh, the effort physical effort that you put into hand hammering versus what you're able to do with the uh, power hammer it's again no comparison so we can literally forge knives all day long and uh, <laughs> you know not kill yourself <clears throat> so that's, that's just really cool and then as far as uh, you know, learning how to use it, you know, um, as I get a little better on it, I'll be able to control the profile a little bit more. I was focusing more on the thickness here, which is more important than the profile. This is easy to uh, quickly clean up. But I will say that, uh, you know, another comparison between hand hammering and the power hammer, just getting the bevels uh, even, flat, and consistent, it's really nice on the power hammer. It's, uh, it's just really nice. Uh, another thing that's really great is, you know, when you're forging your tang out, I like to do tapered tangs on my forged blades, as well as a distal taper. And uh, doing doing the taper tang on the power hammer, it's just a it's just a breeze. It's just uh, it works so good because uh, you can forge the entire width of the tang all the way down, and there's just nothing to it. I don't know what to say. It's just really nice. It's the same thing with the distal taper here. So we've got a nice little sort of frontier style blade. I'm gonna go ahead and clean up the profile, and we'll harden it and uh, and move forward on it. Okay, so I did a nice little rough grind on it before quenching. Once I cleaned the profile up, back, you know, up the bevel a little ways, um, it was a little thicker than I wanted to quench at. Mostly because I don't want to have to grind hardened steel, hardened, hardened and tempered steel. So I uh, did that and we're ready to quench, so let's get this back into kiln. All right, we are fully tempered and ready to go. I'll be doing a uh, differential temper as well after we get it 
finished ground. So let's do that next. Alright guys, well there you have it. Nice little frontier camp belt knife. So, got some nice ironwood scales on there. Be a great little blade. I'll show you some pictures here in just a second. Yeah, I'm real happy with, uh, with the power hammer and the work that it can do in the shop here. So, I was working on a batch of hammers this week and got those finished up. I worked this in just so I could get familiar with the uh, power hammer and get up to speed on that because I do have knife orders and stuff that I need to jump into very soon here. So. That's good. I'll get a sheath made for this and get it up for sale as soon as possible. And that's kind of it. So, as always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you on the next video.